Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Mel and today is Peace Talks time. This is a 48 hour readathon that happens during the month of Ramathon where you get 10 extra points for any book that you read, which you know what that means. We go hard on Peace Talks weekend. We read all of the books and get all of the extra points. So this is going to be a 48 hour reading vlog essentially where I try to read as much as possible. Now yes I am on the sci-fi team but I'm not devoting my weekend solely to sci-fi. This is going to be a mixed bag of pretty much anything I can get my hands on um, that I've been kind of stashing away novellas and shorter books that I've been really wanting to get to. I think I'm going to have my Patreons vote and do um, emoji polls for every book that I read. So if you are in any of the tiers for this month for this weekend they get access to emoji polls and I'm going to have them choose what I'm reading each day. So they've already gone ahead and picked my first read. I will show you the poll up here and it ended up being Keeper Six by Kate Elliott. I've read one other Kate Elliott before The Servant Mage I think is what it was called and that's another novella of hers that I really enjoyed. I ended up giving it like a low four star and was very intrigued but just wanted more from it which I know you guys are super shocked because it's a novella. I think Jade said that this was a fantasy set in a sci-fi world though, so I think this may be a sci-fi fantasy hybrid, which makes me even more excited because I just feel like I've read a lot of the popular ones and I want more recommendations for that, so I'm very excited to get to that one. I don't know what it's about. Sci-fi world with dragons is what I have been told. Um, once I know a little bit more about it, obviously I'll give you guys a better description, but I'm just so excited for this weekend. It doesn't, it's not starting yet. We're not starting for another five and a half hours or so, but I wanted to go ahead and get the intro started so that when that clock struck six, we were ready to go with the reading reading and I will check back in with you guys probably after I finish Keeper Six and we'll decide on what I'm reading next and submit the book. So I'm going to be DNFing Keeper Six. Unfortunately, I just found the world building was non-existent. We were getting dumped all of this stuff, but the dumps were not info dumps. They were just all of these words and things and cultural stuff thrown at you with no like in-depth conversation about anything, no real world building. It was like we were supposed to already know what the world was like that we were in and who these people were, their backstories and everything else. Normally I would be okay with that. However, I feel like in a novella like this, a lot of times we don't get that kind of world building unless it's info dumped at the beginning because there's just not time to do it and still have the plot build through. I also found the main character just to be very bland. I didn't really feel like any of them were going to get any personality and the plot seemed like it was gonna be relatively basic as well. I got 25% of the way in. I probably should have pushed through till 50 so that I could just submit it for the readathon, but I just, I can't be bothered. I need a new book and I need something that I'm really going to enjoy. So I have given my Patreons a new poll to choose from. Um, it's only been up for about four or five minutes, so I'm going to give it just a little bit longer. But currently, we've got three different books that are tied. So I'm going to give it a minute, let these three books become untied, and then I'll check back in with you guys on what I'm going to be reading next. Okay, guys, so the poll has been up for 15 minutes. It was a really close race. Like, originally, this was winning by a landslide, but then a couple of other people saw the poll, and they ended up going with Pen Pal by... Dothan, oh gosh, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but they ended up going with Pen Pal. So this is what I'm going to be reading next. It is relatively short. It's 238 pages long. I believe that this is an indie published book. I will triple check that, but I'm excited. This is one of Lexi's favorites and something that I have been wanting to get to for a while now. It was like a Reddit sensation that was then published together. I'm excited to get to it. So once I'm about halfway, I'll check back in with you guys and I'm hoping that I can definitely get this done tonight. God. Oh God. You guys, I can't even talk because we... We're in sprints and Rye was just reading Potato Smut and giving us all the play-by-play -play updates of the Potato Smut. And so I have read like literally nothing because of my stomach hurts, literally hurts from laughing so hard. I can't. I can't. If you guys did not watch the opening sprints to Peace Talks, just go back at like the three and a half hour mark and watch that chatty bit because... You know what? Don't, don't. I'm going to be nice to you and I'm going to tell you not to do that because it is just bad. I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Like literally, it's not going to be the horror book that makes me have nightmares. It's going to be fingerling potato shifter smut. 
Like, why? Is this author okay? Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I, I don't know how I'm going to read. I don't know how I'm going to focus because, like, how do you focus after that? But I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I actually um, did start Fina because that was the audiobook choice that my patrons gave me. And I don't have anything to say about it. I'm like 33%, but then it was derailed and I'm going to have to like get my thoughts together. But I'll come back and talk to you guys later once I can focus. Potato shifter smut. Potato shifter smut. <laughs> okay, so obviously I have moved to the bed. It's gotten quite a bit later, but I am halfway through Pen Pal and I'm enjoying this. I was a little bit unsure about it when I first started, but I'm really starting to pick up traction and enjoy it a lot more. This is following, I believe, an adult that is remembering things that happened when he was younger and how they happened and kind of piecing together things from his memories that are a lot more terrifying than they seem to be when he was young. And each chapter is basically a different memory that are all slowly starting to connect back together. This story is escalating with each one so far, and so I'm assuming by the sixth story it's going to be quite stressful. It reminds me a little bit of the way Confessions is told where you have this meandering story that you're like okay get to the point and then the ending of the chapter happens and it's like whoa and then you move into the next story and you do have a little bit of that meandering plot but then a little bit faster you're like whoa and then everything just keeps escalating faster and faster and faster until it all accumulates at the end. That's the impression that I'm getting from the pacing of this book. Stories are drastically drastically different completely different types of books, but that's kind of the pacing of this. I'm liking it so far. I don't know exactly how I'm going to rate it. It'll really just depend on what the ending looks like, but so far I'm intrigued and I'm excited to get back to reading it. Oh, so it is 1230 at night and I have finished Pen Pal. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about this one. There are things about it that worked well and that I can appreciate and then there are parts of it that I just really was not a huge fan of. The writing style did take me a little bit of time to get used to but eventually I did settle into that and I think it made sense in the context of the story that we've got this young boy that or this man that is remembering things as a young boy. I liked the friendship in here. I thought that that was well done. Um, for the most part I felt like the memories and the stories did line up well in the end but there were a couple especially like the um, I think it was the fifth story with the dementia and even the sixth one with the sister. I just don't really understand how they tied back in. I know that it was like I get the point and I get what it was doing, but I just don't feel like it was overly necessary. I think that the others could have stood on their own with that final story kind of wrapping everything up. And I think that for the most part, these stories were too long. If they had been instead of 30 or 40 pages a piece, if they had been more like 10 to 15 and we had gotten to that climax a lot faster, I think that I would have personally enjoyed this a little bit more. This story is one that is a psychological, it's trying to tell you something and normally I do like and appreciate those. I feel like maybe for me I just never spent a lot of time pondering what this guy was remembering and so it didn't quite hit me as hard. Overall, I think this is going to end up getting a three star from me. I can, like I said, I can appreciate what it was doing and why people would really enjoy it, but it did miss the mark for me in a few places, but I did still enjoy it. Um, so we need to put this through the spreadsheet and get points for Ilma. So this was Pen Pal. Um, it is 238 pages and we did read this for the 48 hour readathon. I'm going to try to do increasing on this. We'll see. It's indie, it's not hybrid, and it's not a sci-fi. Um, it's not technically on the list of host faves. Can I spell my name on the cover? No, it's not going to have an M on the cover. Dang it. Well, crap. It's a new-to-me author. It does have mental health rep. I think it is underrated. Okay, we're going to flip back and we're going to see if I can do attack on this one because I feel like that's not getting me enough points. So for decreasing, again, we do Indian self-pub. Um, I'm going to steal this off of Cassidy's TBR. Definitely a dysfunctional family. I don't know if this is a pseudonym or not. I'm going to go with probably not. But nowhere on here does it say that. 
It does play with time. I would think it would play with time. No illustrated spine. No monster on the cover. Ugh! This is not getting me very many points. This is annoying. Okay. Um... I need to look and see if it was his debut, because I don't actually know the answer to that question. I do think it's a debut. I didn't do an audio, and it's not really a dark cover. So I think we're going to get our 10 plus points for it being during Peace Talks, and then we're going to get negative 10, 16, 21, 25, and 26. So negative 26 points. Who are we going to attack with this one? I'm going to attack Enya, I think, just simply because I have not attacked Enya yet, and so it feels like everybody needs their due, and they did attack us the most in the first week. So, I'm going to hit submit, and yeah, so negative 26 points plus 10, and then I don't think that this would count for the page count bonus, but I honestly don't remember. So, not too bad. Um, glad to have finally read this and to know what the fuss is all about. Um, I do need to read some more of Fina. I think I have about a half an hour of the audiobook left, so I'm going to listen to that for the remainder of the sprint. This is our last sprint, so if I don't finish Fina tonight, I will update you guys in the morning on that one. We'll have to see what I'm reading next. Um, we are only, what, six hours, six and a half hours into the 48 hours, so there's still a long way to go, lots of points to be had, but so far so good. I'm getting really tired, so I'm going to go listen to this and hopefully go to bed soon but Cassidy's got me held hostage so we'll see okay guys so we are in the car I am about to go head to my grandmother's house um, we've been visiting her a lot since my grandfather passed away just gonna keep her busy I have fin I finished Fina last night and I I liked it it was probably gonna be a three star it was fun but it wasn't anything like just amazing I think the problem that I have with novellas is that we don't typically get move you guys up a little bit we don't typically get a lot of like backstory into stuff and so I always feel like I'm kind of missing some context this is following two this is following a couple and they are working in a furniture store but in this world worm hole worm holes are natural and someone's grandmother goes missing while shopping in the furniture store into a wormhole and they go after her um it's quirky it's fun the squabbling between the couple got on my nerves quite a bit I felt like it was just repetitive and dragging and I don't think it would have bothered me quite as much if we'd had more context into their relationship and why they were fighting but of course we didn't so it was just like ah, stop squabbling <laughs> but I you know get what the point was this is queer it's a queer norm setting so it's going to work perfect for our fantasy so really quickly let's put this through the um, spreadsheet or put this through the submission form and then I will tell you guys what my patrons picked for me to read on my way this morning so we have Ilma we have defect or no, not defect, sorry, Fina. Um, I don't know how long Fina is. Fina is 92 pages, and we did read it for Peace Talks. Okay, again, we're going to try increasing on this one. Um, it is our team genre. I don't necessarily feel like it's hybrid. You might could argue the fantasy thing, but I think it's more just team. It's not indie. Can I spell my name on the cover? I can. Wait, I think I can. New to me author, mental health prep. I don't really feel like, I don't know if this is underrated or not. I've seen a lot of people talking about it, but I don't hear about it that much. So I am think I'm going to do underrated. It is a book out of my comfort zone. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So we get 10 extra bonus points for it being Peace Talks, 10 for Team Genre. So that's 20, 26, 31, 35, 38. And 40. So we got plus 40 points for Ilma off of that one. Huge success, counting that as a win. Um, and then let's go look at my Patreon poll and see what's winning for what I'm going to be reading next. <laughs> it looks like Defect is winning. That's kind of funny. Um, which is perfect because I need an audiobook anyway. So I'm going to listen to the sequel to Fina, which is Defect, on my way. And I'll check in with you guys probably later this afternoon after we've gotten through all of our shenanigans. Hey guys, so sorry. It is the next morning. Um, I had a little bit of plans derail yesterday. My grandmother ended up in the hospital. Um, she's doing okay, but of course it kind of made to where I wasn't really able to get a whole lot of reading done. And so I have now just finished Defect by Nino, Nino Kipra. I think I'm saying that right. And this is the sequel to Fina. It kind of stands on its own like it does spoil Fina but not in a real strong way I mean I, I, I think you can kind of 
infer how Fina would end, um, but it does kind of spoil that. However, the story itself stands on its own. It's following Derek, who is the model employee for this Ikea, essentially. And he wakes up one morning and he's not feeling well and he's having like blood dripping down his nose and he's told to take a day off, but things slowly start to spiral from there. This has, instead of wormholes, more like um, a cloning type of situation. I liked the beginning of this one a little bit better, but slowly we just started to kind of derail. These books are quirky and relatively fast paced. There was a point in the middle that, or the beginning that was a little bit slow. I like the concept of them, but they are very much so more focused on societal conversations than they are like the science fiction or just fiction side of things. Like it's very much so still a fiction story, but definitely the point of these I think is societal conversations. Um, so it all depends on just what you're looking for from these. For me personally, I think it did a good job with the conversations, but I did want a bit more from the actual story part of it. Similar to how I felt with Fina, it was fine, but I never found myself just completely engaged or loving the characters or really wanting to know what was gonna happen in the story or anything like that. So I think it's gonna be, again, another like lower three star for me. It was fine, not a favorite, not a hate. So we do need to go ahead and figure out how many points this is gonna get, and I will tell you guys what my patrons decided for me to read next. All right, so we have Defect. It was 170 pages, and it was for Peace Talks. So let's see what happens if we do it from an attack. So it's our genre. Um, I need to find out if this is own voices because I don't actually know that. And if it is, that would be great. And I feel like that would add a lot to the book as a whole. Yes, it is own voices. Okay, cool. So we got that. Um, I don't know if anyone else on a different team was reading this or not. I feel like with Dysfunctional Family, we can count this, but in a very obscure way. And if you've read it, you kind of know what I mean by the obscure way but just kind of letting you go, it is obscure. It is isolated to the store. I did not buy this book. It was published in 2021 and it was an audiobook. Okay, so we've got negative 10, negative 16, negative 21, negative 25, negative 29, and negative 30. Which realm are we going to attack? I feel like no matter what I do, I'm gonna have people like, why did you attack me? <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna attack Cyrus because I just feel like they're just kind of hanging out in the background. And that's what happened with the team that won last year. They just kind of hung back, didn't really say anything. And then wham, they won the whole thing. So we're gonna attack Cyrus again and submit. So that was actually a relatively good book to use. So let's see what um, my Patreons picked for me to read next. I think I know, and it's sitting like under a stack of books over there. So I will have to show it to you guys in a minute. Okay, yes. So Jack and Jill actually won for this one, which is perfect because it is a, it's on my um, TBR Bluff TBR, and I didn't think I was really gonna get to any of those, honestly, this month. So that's gonna work out really well. I think I can finish it pretty quickly, and then I'm hoping I can maybe can get one more quicker audiobook done before this readathon ends. Really, it's gonna kind of depend on what we find out about my grandmother throughout the day. She's doing well, she's, you know, awake and fine, and they're just running a bunch of tests to be safe. So just kind of depends on what we find out, but I'm hoping that I can get a relatively decent amount read today. So I'm going to go grab Jack and Jill and then we're starting sprints in about 45 minutes. So I'll touch base with you guys when I've read more. I feel like I am dragging hard today and I may not leave this chair for the rest of Peace Talks, but I have finished Jack and Jill by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is following a woman who is having nightmares because she's remembering what her father did to her and her brother when she was a child, and it's starting to bleed and affect her everyday life with her husband and her two children. This is much more of a, um, the monster is in humanity type of story rather than like a imagery type of horror story. I liked it, but it's definitely not one of my favorites from him. Um, I found that the dream parts were very interesting. The stuff in between the dreams with the husband, I just didn't really find overly engaging. Toward the end, it was like, oh, okay. And that was fine. But the beginning parts with the husband and the kids, I just didn't find them to be 
like I said, very engaging or even sometimes very realistic in the conversations and the way things were being handled. Some parts of it was, it was more how it was written that seemed unrealistic to me, not the actual events. I don't know if that really makes sense, but I think this one's going to be a three star. It was fine, um, but let's see how many points it gets us. And then I need to pull my patrons for another book because I don't know what I'm gonna be reading. I don't know what I'm gonna give them for the poll. I really feel like I need another sci-fi because this vlog has had two horrors in it and I feel like we need some sci-fi. But sci-fi novellas are really hard to find and I've gotta have something that I can read in less than four hours. So I'm gonna do a little bit of digging, but first let's check in and see how many points this got for us. So Jack and Jill, it was 96 pages. We're gonna try to do increasing again. We'll see how it, how it how it goes. It is indie. Source of light on the cover. Not really. Can I spell my name? Is there an M? I don't think there's going to be an M on here. Oh yeah. So from E-L. We can definitely do my name. It is a retelling. It definitely has mental health rep. I never hear anybody talk about it. So I feel like those are going to be the maximum amount of points that we're going to get for this one, which is fine. We're going to get 10 points for it being indie. 16, 20, 24, and 23 points. So not too bad. All right, I'm gonna go do a little bit of digging into some sci-fi novellas, and I will let you guys know once I find out what I'm gonna read next. Here's to hoping I can get a decent uh, amount of this clip done before David comes back around with the lawnmower, but I finished The Dispatcher by John Scalzi, I think is how you say his last name, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I thought the concept was really interesting. It is about a world where you can be dispatched um, if you are murdered or if you are like in the room with a dispatcher under like a really complicated surgery where you're gonna die anyway. When people are dispatched, then they wake up naked back at home about 20 hours prior to the time of their death. So if you had, you know, a heart condition, you would still have that heart condition, but you wouldn't have all of the wounds from surgery. And it's just really interesting. There are people that are dispatchers, which are legally allowed to kill people and to get rid of people in order to um, facilitate them coming back to life. And the whole concept is that one of the dispatchers has gone missing and that shouldn't happen. I just found the concept very intriguing. It's one of two or three um, different novellas. So I'll probably end up completing that trilogy at some point. Point. And I think I'm going to read some more John Scalzi in the future. Like I really had a good time with it. I think it's going to probably be a lower, keep pausing to get the lawnmower away from the window. <laughs> I think it's going to be a lower four star for me. I quite enjoyed it. So let's quickly run it through the Realmathon submission and then we will be finished for Peace Talks. Okay, so Ilma obviously the dispatcher and then it was 136 pages not that that really matters peace talks hopefully increasing um it is our team genre i think that it's indie audible audio awards subterranean press okay hang on i'm pretty sure subterranean press is its own like it's an indie but a bigger indie yeah it is so this does count as an indie I don't know if it would really be considered a hybrid. It is a mystery combined with the science fiction elements and the mystery is a pretty prominent spot. So I'm going to count it as a hybrid. Hopefully it is, but I feel like it was at least 40% of the book was discussing this mystery of what happened to the dispatcher and him working with the police. Can I spell my name on the book? I can just because I did the audiobook and there is an M in the performed and then an L. Yes. I can spell my name on the book. It was close. If I hadn't listened to the audiobook, I would not be able to do that. <laughs> this is a new to me author. I think it's underrated. I don't ever hear anybody talk about it. It's not multi point of view. Um, so I think those are going to be the ones that I could count for that. That's only three. So let's just really quickly because we're coming in down to the wire. Let's see what decreasing would give us. Just glancing at decreasing, I don't think it's going to give me any more points. So we're just going to stick with our original increasing plan. And it'll end up being 30 plus the 44 peace talks, 46, 51, and 54 points. So positive 54 points, including the peace talks points. That's not too shabby. I will take that. So I had so much fun this weekend with peace talks. I think that we read a total of like five books, not including the DNF at the beginning. Um, a lot of different sci-fi novellas, which I had a really good time exploring and figuring out more about. Uh, like I said, plans were derailed a little bit, but I still had a great weekend. I'm glad everybody's okay. And I can't wait to 
read some more from some of these authors. I feel like this was a huge success. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me all weekend. Let me know if you participated in Peace Talks and how many books you were able to read down in the comments below. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are down in the description box. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!